like to call the meeting to order of the Planning Commission in San Carlos, April 15th, 2019. And our thoughts and prayers are with the people in Paris, Notre Dame Cathedral burning today, uh, as a world landmark in religion and architecture and culture. Will you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and we'll have the roll call. Yes, good evening, uh, Chair Bradley. I'd like to uh, make just a brief announcement that both Commissioners Roof and Yacoponi are absent, um, as we can see this evening, but they um, are absences um, that they notified staff of well in advance. Commissioner Dugan. Uh, here. Vice Chair Bergman. And Chair Bradley. Here. Thank you. First, we have public comment, and co public comment is limited to items not on the agenda. The Planning Commission may briefly respond to statements made or questions posed as allowed by the Brown Act here in California, Government Code Section 54954.2. However, the Planning Commission in San Carlos's general policy is to refer items to the planning staff for their attention or have a matter placed on a future planning commission agenda for more comprehensive action. And next is approval of minutes of our last meeting on April 1st, 2019. Are there any comments or corrections? I move we approve the minutes as presented. I'll second that. Commissioner Dugan? Uh, approved. Vice Chair Bergman? Yes. And Chair Bradley? Yes. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the public hearing, a procedure for the public hearing is the planning staff will present a report on the history, physical features, et cetera, on the application, followed by the planning staff's recommendations. The applicant will make a presentation. Thereafter, interested members of the community may speak on the proposal. When all interested parties have had an opportunity to be heard, the hearing will be closed and no further discussion from the floor can then be held. The Planning Commission will then consider the evidence and make its recommendation. If you challenge a public hearing item in court, you may be limited to raising only those issues you or someone else has raised at the public hearing or in re uh, written correspondence after public notice. Uh, speakers should fill out a speaker's form found over in the corner by the door and hand it to a recording secretary or any of us to address the planning commission. The speaker should then come up to the uh, front and uh, microphone speak there uh, because this meeting is being recorded. This assists the planning staff and may uh, making accurate minutes. Uh, tonight we had two items on the agenda and as I understand it, item A, 817 Walnut Street is to be deferred or continued. Yes, uh, through the chair, that is correct. Um, item um, A, excuse me, this would be 6A, 817 Walnut, um, is going to be continued to the commission's first meeting um, in May. 
which I believe is, or I will tell you, that would be uh, Monday, May the 6th. And the reason uh, that we um, chose to um, move that to a date um, certain and not rather than this evening is so that we can have all five commissioners pre uh, present when that item um, is presented before you. Um, so thank you for making that note. Yeah. So we just have the one item this evening. I think that's a good idea to wait till they're all here because it's a big project. Um, so the remaining uh, item on the agenda is uh, water tanks, 2783 Melody Drive. That's APN uh, 050180020 and it's an adoption of a mitigated negative declaration and mitigated monitoring and reporting program and consideration for design review approval for a new water storage tank for the California Water Service Company. And we have uh, a staff report. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to introduce the commission um, to one of our um, uh, contract uh, planners, um, Associate Planner Kelly Beggs will be um, presenting the item um, to the commission this evening. Welcome, thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Lisa, for the introduction. Thank you. Um, good evening, commissioners. As Lisa said, I'm Kelly Beggs. I'm a contract associate planner for the city of San Carlos. The item before you is a request for adoption of an initial study mitigated negative declaration and design review approval associated with the construction of a new water storage tank for the California Water Service Company. The applicant proposes to construct a 350,000 gallon steel water tank on an existing Cal Water site with an existing 250,000 gallon steel water tank. Two actions are before the commission. The first um, is design review approval for the new water tank. The second would be adoption of the ism and prepared for the proposed project. And I'll take you through both items. I'll start by reviewing the existing conditions of the site. Um, this slide includes a graphic with an aerial that depicts the 49,600 square foot parcel which currently includes an existing 250,000 gallon steel water tank, which is 30 feet high and 36 wide, a single 30 horsepower booster pump, surge tank and associated piping, electrical system infrastructure, communication lines, and other minor infrastructure. Cal Water leases a portion of the site for telecommunications equipment, which include a 44 foot tall cell tower, a small equipment building and emergency generator located along the eastern perimeter, um, and there's an additional cell tower, which is 12 feet tall to the east of the existing water tank. Um, existing facilities on the site, as you can see, are concentrated on a flat pad on the eastern portion of the parcel, and the western portion of the parcel is covered in mature vegetation, um, including native species such as coast live oaks. The general plan designation is single family and the zoning is RS6. As you can see on the graphic on this slide, the surrounding lots fall within the RS6 zone and a variety of other zoning districts, um, including public, park, um, and RM20 multifamily low density. Heather School is to the east of the project site and Heather Park and Heather Dog Park are to the south. Two to three story multifamily residential developments are to the north and west of the site. Um, and as you can see, it's catty corner to another RS6 uh, single family district across Melody Drive. This slide presents the proposed site plan. The proposed steel boats of tank would be constructed on a level asphalt paved area next to the existing water storage tank. The proposed capacity, as I've mentioned, is 350,000 gallons. The proposed tank would measure 37.7 feet tall and 45 feet in diameter. The project will also include installation of a new safety guardrail and asphalt concrete berm along the northern edge of the entrance driveway. The base of the driveway and existing sidewalk would be improved to provide safer vehicle access to the site entrance and to improve pedestrian safety along the sidewalk. In terms of code compliance, as a minor utility, the proposed tank is a permitted use in the RS6 district um, and it does comply with development standards outlined in the code. 
As you may be aware, the RS6 height limit is 28 feet, um, but per SCMC section 18.15.060, water tanks may exceed the maximum permitted building height by 10 feet, provided that the project does not exceed 25% lot coverage and is located at least 25 feet from any lot line. Um, as you can see, the project meets these criteria um, with setbacks from 34 feet to 194 feet from lot lines um, and lot coverage of about 6%. The project design, um, the proposed tank would be steel bolted and painted California Water Service grouse tan, which would match the existing tank on the site. Um, these photo simulations depict conditions after landscaping has been installed and maintained for 12 years, so at a certain point of maturation. Um, the top photograph is taken from Heather Park. The bottom left is from Melendy Drive near the intersection of Melendy and Portofino Drive, and the bottom right photo um, is from Melendy Drive across from the proposed tank. The project includes new landscaping as presented on this slide. Four Monterey pine trees are proposed for removal, but they do not re require tree removal permits. The landscaping plan includes the planting of four toyons, 10 coast live oak trees, and 13 uh, deodar cedar trees, in addition to a variety of native and ornamental shrubs. The landscaping is intended to screen views from adjacent receptors, um, such as residences on Melendy Drive, Heather Park, and Heather School. To take you through the required findings for design review, um, the project meets the required findings which are displayed on this slide. Related to the first finding, the proposal is consistent with the requirements for minor utilities in the RS6 district. Related to the second finding, the proposed tank is consistent with general plan policy LU 8.16, which requires utility facilities to be sensitively placed, shielded, and lessened from view to the greatest extent possible. The landscape plan is specifically designed to provide new trees to screen the project from public view and further reduce visual impacts. Regarding the third finding, the proposed tank was reviewed pursuant to CEQA, including the drafting, publication, and circulation of an ISMND, which I'll discuss next. Um, additionally, the proposal is in conformance with the RS6 single family zoning district. And lastly, the proposal satisfies the requirements for design review. The overall design of the project, including exterior design elements and landscaping, enhances the appearance of features on the site. The project is appropriate for the function of the business, and the project details and materials are internally consistent to the extent in which they apply. Next up, I'll summarize the environmental review conducted for the proposed project. The city and our consultants prepared an initial study um, and mitigated negative declaration, an ISMND, pursuant to the requirements of the California Environmental Quality Act, also known as CEQA. The initial study identified several potentially significant impacts that could result from the project related to aesthetics, air quality, biological resources, cultural resources, geology and soils, transportation and traffic, and tribal cultural resources. However, since the IS concluded that these impacts could be mitigated to a level of less than significant, a mitigated negative declaration, or MND, was prepared. Recommended mitigation measures reduce the, the impacts to less than significant. The ISMND um, and the associated mitigation monitoring and reporting plan are included as attachments in your packet. This slide depicts the required findings for CEQA. Um, the ISMD concludes that the Cal Water Storage Tank Project can meet the following mandatory findings of significance. The first finding is related to plant and animal communities, habitats, and historic and prehistoric resources. The project's impact on these would be less than significant with mitigation. The second relates to cumulative impacts to which the project impact would be less than significant. And the third finding relates to impacts on humans on which the project would have a less than significant impact with mitigation. I'd also like to briefly summarize the public outreach conducted in association with this project and the comments received. Um, in January 2017, Cal Water mailed out neighborhood notification um, January 28th of 2017 held an outreach meeting 
and then March 1st through April 1st of this year, um, we had a 30-day CEQA public review period um, to which we did not receive comments, and then staff also mailed out public notice um, and published notice of this meeting in the newspaper and have not received any comments. This is the suggested motion, should you choose to approve the project. I'm available for questions. The project applicant would also like to make a short presentation um, and the environmental consulting team is here as well. Are there any questions for staff at this point? I think it'd be fine to hear from the applicant first. Comes the applicant, welcome. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Maurice Francis, and I'm the project engineer assigned to this project, and I'm with California Water. I also have uh, our Bayshore District Superintendent, James Douglas, present, as well as our Environmental Affairs Manager, Mark Bloom, who's also been involved in the project from the very beginning present. So today, thank you for the opportunity to share about the importance of this project. So we are adding a secondary tank to an existing storage tank site. Uh, and the address is at 2783 Melandi Drive. So what, we what I will cover in this presentation is basically a quick overview of Cal Water System that serves the whole Bayshore, Saint, uh, Saint, Car uh, Saint Carlos, uh, and San Mateo area. Overview of this project, the need and the benefits of the project to the community, and then I'll take any questions and answers if there, it comes up. So California Water Service Company we are basically the largest on the West Coast, uh, third largest in the U.S., and we serve nearly 2 million people with over 490,000 service connections. Some of them could be commercial, but most of them are residential. Uh, our company, throughout our company, we have 24 unique service areas serving all types of communities, like I mentioned. Each district has its own operation and customer centers. As part of that operations, we also have employees which are part of the community they serve. So for our Bayshore district, it was formed in 1931 with the purchase of South San Francisco Water Company, St. Carlos Water Company, and San Mateo Water System from Pacific Water Company. Currently, we serve the communities of San Mateo, St. Carlos, and South San Francisco. And uh, that includes approximately 50, over 53,000 service connections, of which 36,200 forms the Mid Peninsula, San Mateo, and San Carlos areas. <clears throat> 16, but about 17,000 connections for under South San Francisco. Is it not going forward? Thank you. Okay, that's great. So our Bayshore district that I, that I mentioned earlier that covers the three, San Carlos, San Mateo, and South San Francisco, our, our whole distribution system includes over five, about approximately 510 miles of pipeline, seven groundwater wells, 4,170 uh, 4, fire hydrants, 52 storage tank, and approximately from those uh, storage tanks, we have a total of 29,000 275,000 gallons worth of storage for the community. So system overview of our water supply. So 100% of our water supplied to this specific neighborhood, which is Melendi Drive and St. Carlos, are all straight from our tie-in connection supplied from the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission, SFPUC, where, as you, as you know already, SFPUC gets its water from many sources, including Crystal Springs, the Suno Treatment Plant, as well as Het Hetchy. <clears throat> so the, uh, brief project overview. So this is an existing storage tank that has an, uh, an existing 250,000 gallon storage tank. We are, our project is to include, in, install and erect and complete a second tank with a capacity of 350,000 gallon to, to support the additional. And we are here today in the process of obtaining permits from the city to go forward with this project. Next slide, please. So this is an aerial view, and there's a site there. 
and we are well aware, as explained earlier, of our neighbours, as well as the uh, Heather School Elementary School, on the on the on the downside of our property, as well as the dog park below us. Next slide. So, our project includes building a bolted steel tank that is that is designed to current California seismic codes. Uh, that tank. The steel tank will be anchored on concrete ring wall foundations. As I said, the tank is alone will also design and meet all the, the current codes and requirements of the American Water Works Association and seismic codes. And our, our schedule is to start construction for the project this year in 2019. So the need for this project, adding an additional 350,000 gallons to this current storage tank site is from our previous master plan that we did, uh, the total storage required from the 2008 master plan was 8.7 million gallons. The maximum day demand, 7.3. Average day demand, Here's, here are all the numbers. But in short, the, our goal of adding a second, the second tank to this existing storage site would basically is to cut down that emergency use or storage deficit of which we computed to be about 4.2 million gallons and be able to support the community better. Next slide. So some of the emergency storage situations that could happen is, as I explained earlier, we get all our water straight from San Fran City of South San Francisco, Public Utilities Commission. So in the event of interruptions may be caused by from an earthquake, an unplanned uh, San Francisco Public Utilities Commission maintenance work or power outage, which will then shut uh, uh, cut short our supply to our existing community. This is where, or when we have a prolonged water outages, this is where having increased storage on this existing site at 27, 2783 Melandi Drive will play an important role in meeting public needs uh, during these specific periods. So some of our strategies, we also have several uh, other storage tank sites in this whole neighborhood that supplies the whole community there. So some of our uh, other solutions to meeting the earlier 4.2 storage deficit that I mentioned earlier is multi-year plans to build more emergency storage tanks within the, the, the boundaries of our St. Carlos communities there, as well as emergency storage tank builds in locations that already owned by Calwater. So this site is a perfect example. The first tank, the 250,000 gallon tank, was built back, I think, in the late 60s. And when we, when we build it out and we lay it out, we always thought that in the future, should the need arise, we have this existing space. So here we are at this point in time wanting to develop and add a second thing. Some of the other exercises that we've looked during this whole course of this process is what would it take? Can we source or buy a property? As you already know, it's, it's not a cheap option to, to look at. And that's why we came back to our existing site and try to work with the city and everybody to try and build a tank that will still provide the, the much needed need and support for the community. So this is the existing view from Melendi. Uh, this is a close up view from across the street, the driveway. And here's on paper, the future elevation view of Melendi Drive. So as I kind of alluded earlier, why here? It's an existing storage tank that we, we knew early on when we we acquired the property that someday we wanted to keep that space and uh, to, to build a, secondary, a second tank addition on site. It's more cost effective. Uh, the current uh, piping, booster facility, electrical, uh, uh, electrical supply to operate the station is already there. It's a matter of uh, connecting it, connect, uh, making the necessary provisions to, to connect to the proposed new tank and we'll be able to operate the tank easily but instead of you know putting in more infrastructure or more 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 cost to to develop that that current operation system that we have on on site in terms of mechanical and electrical equipment as i mentioned the project schedule uh, we started this back in 2017 with the design permitting and public outreach and uh, hopefully this project will receive the approval so that we can follow through with the next steps until we can get the building permit approved. And then the goal is we'd like to start construction in early fall this year 
provided we meet, we follow and work closely with the city in terms of all the necessary conditional use permit that may apply for this project. And uh, because it's a bolted steel tank, uh, the panels will be shipped to the site and we'll assemble them on site. It'll be much more faster versus the traditional way of welded steel tank, which you know takes a longer time, pending weather, your coding and everything. So this is much more easier assembling it. And we're hoping that in the time frame of about eight, eight weeks to about 11 weeks, we'll be able to complete the, the storage tank. And uh, all said and done, hopefully by summer next year, we'll have a second tank in service that will be able to provide the much needed uh, resources in terms of meeting storage demands, uh, emergency requirements, fire flow, and all for the community. So, so this project, again, important to every resident in the area in terms of safety, reliability, emergency preparedness, and uh, so here's, like I introduced James, he will be working closely on uh, on this project and working with the residents, working with the with the city officials, everybody that comes on uh, on the job site during the construction once it's approved, and uh, we hope to have a good. Hopefully, we'll be able to work with everybody, and this project will be a success. <clears throat> Thank you for your time. And if there's any question, yeah, I do have. Um, I have three things that really sort of like are tied on top of my list. One is. And you probably already know this since you own the property, um, but um, whether or not you have pre-knowledge of any um, significant indigenous is it, is it an indigenous site, or have, have, do you know at all whether that's an issue or has been an issue? Not to my knowledge. Okay. No. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah that's part of the environmental review, and uh, the environmental consultants could speak to that. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to hear that. Christina Lau, I'm with MIG, and we did the uh, environmental document here for your review. So as part of the environmental review, we had an archaeologist who reached out and did a sacred lands file search and a search with the Native American Heritage Commission to ask uh, what Native American tribes are culturally affiliated with the area and to contact them and ask them if they have uh, known locations or known lo um uh, tribal resources in the area, and we didn't get any responses from any of those tribes. Thank you. And um, the wildlife, I know we take care of by when we build, right? So I'm pretty sure we'll take care of the birds and then yeah. what did, whatever mouse. <laughs> there's, there's a certain mouse that I know that held up a whole side of a um, outside of the, the, the wood of roof, not roof mouse, but something like that. Anyway. I don't uh, think that's although, an issue of concern. Uh, the other thing is I saw one slide with, as far as the aesthetics. I saw that there was a, um, a, a, um, a landscape plan, but one of the pictures that was shown as the 2B picture showed a big, huge tank and the road going by. Um, and it didn't look like that there would be any arc, um, landscaping in front of it. And I wasn't sure if that was because there was a road and not room for landscaping or... That drawing that we took from my drawing plans was from the initial plans when I first submitted for, for initial review to get the process started. But uh, since then, we've, we've done the photo simulations and we'll update the drawings accordingly too. So what you saw there was maybe in the first year of growth or, or and again, he didn't have the, 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 the landscape yeah, plan that uh, Kelly right. shared earlier, which was the one that was submitted and approved per, per the submittals. All right, so the ones that are, yeah, this is the three that we were looking at. So the one I was actually the, looking at the most was the bottom right as far as impacts of the public. I'm trying to get in a sense of where the, where we're looking from on that one? So that's directly across from the tank on Melendy. So I think it's just um, downhill of the access drive. And I'm trying to think, it doesn't look like there's a, there's a road right there, so it doesn't look like you can put more screening anywhere around that that would eventually. Correct, and the, I think that the slope of the topography also 
prevents That's you it. from. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That was my only question. Um, I would chime in. I, I actually share Commissioner Bergman's concerns on the landscaping um, in the packet, and I think these are actually the 12, the, as presented, these are the photos of the landscaping at year 12. And so I do find that disappointing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you guys should be congratulated that you own a whole acre there. So uh, you know, that was a lot of good foresight uh, for the future need of an additional tank. But that yields you a 6% lot coverage, so you have tons of room there to figure out this visual screening. And I think that's, um, I, I guess, uh, is there someone in the room that can speak to what species are being planted in screening and is 12 years just not an adequate amount of time for this to fill in? Or is this what we can expect this thing to look like in 20 years and 30 years and on into the future? Christina, would you come address that? I do have the number of trees here while Christina and Barbara are um, walking up. Uh, it's four toyons, 10 coast live oak trees, and 13 cedar trees. Oh, those are big. Good evening. I'm Barbara Beard with MIG. We're tag teaming tonight. Sure. Um, the visual simulations, as shown in the initial study, were uh, immediately after planting, one year and 12 years. 12 years is a rather... Um, in a way, it's a rather arbitrary time period in that you could extend it out longer than that period and show landscaping much more mature than a 12-year time period. But 12 years seems like, from a community aspect, a time period that they would be living with um, an unscreened tank. So this would show the landscaping maturing at 12 years, you know, it would continue to grow because of the kinds of species that are being planted they reach a lot higher height than shown in this particular 12-year photo simulation. Yeah, ultimately, but ultimately, um, yes. But we don't have an arborist in the room, or there's nothing here that actually stipulates how high these are expected to grow. Um, I'm looking at the landscape schedule, and I don't see it. I just see the quart size of the initial planting. That's the only data I see on this. It may be in an attachment in, a, in the appendix. You know, it's a height as of planting. I th no, actually, okay. So 35 to 70 feet is the is the coastal oak, which, yeah, that's a big tree. Right. Usually it's provided in ranges depending on growing conditions, et cetera. And the cedar, 40 feet, and then the, uh, the tonians, uh, 10 to 20 feet. So those are going to be short. Um, because hmm. I guess, you know, I, I, with 6% lot coverage and you've got a whole acre here, I just, I'm not understanding why we can't completely screen this thing. It's a great big tank. That's really our charge here in design review, you know, just right, our policy that, that we're being asked to enforce here is, require utility facilities be sensitively placed, shielded, screened, or lessened from view to the greatest extent possible through design review. And I, I understand 12 years doesn't reflect the full amount, but I, I think more trees are called for and more of the 70-foot uh, variety here. Is there an aerial that we could show for a moment? It might help, uh, particularly the aerial with the parcel boundary. So this doesn't actually show the topography very well, but it does show um, why the lot coverage would be 6%. Um, and um, we can flip to other slides that might help illustrate this as we go on. But if you can visualize the Melendee Street side of that, it's a very steep um, incline up from Melody to the top of the parcel. And then the very dense vegetation that's a big green blob on the left of their parcel, that's following a, a rocky ridge line. 
and that ridgeline slopes either down towards Melendy or down towards the open, open space area. So it's not a flat piece of ground. And that would, um, Cal Water can speak to it, but would require a lot of excavation of the rocky hillside if you were to relocate the tank to someplace else on the side that wasn't already graded. Yeah, I, 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 I understand the placement of the tank and I wouldn't quibble with that. that that's a significant item. Um, I guess just, just looking at the landscaping plan, um, I mean, the view from Melanie Drive just needs to be better. I mean, we're, we're basically gonna be looking right at this great big tank. You know, it's just sitting there, it's huge. And uh, so I won't quibble and, and, and you know, explore moving the tank around, but uh, you do, I think, as I look at this landscape plan, have plenty of earth there. And I know it's a little bit steep, but you can even see it from the view from Melendy. I mean, there's room to put some big trees in there. And right now the landscape plan doesn't call for any, and that's why the view from Melendy is so stark. Uh, Cal Water could work with their landscape designer. I think it would require possibly creating planting spots on the hillside between the sidewalk um, and the steep slope as you go up. So Cal Water may need to um, create viable planting locations for large trees that are going to have a good stable base that would be successful there. Okay. And, yeah, I think it, so yeah. I'm not speaking to the viability of that. That would be between Cal Water and their um, engineers and the landscape architect, design people, arborist. Um, the landscape plan presented by Cal Water was peer reviewed by a sub, sub consultant that we had. And um, there was extensive back and forth over a course of months trying to fine tune the species selection and the placement of the largest growing trees to maximize screening. And uh, this was the ultimate landscape plan that the team, um, everybody agreed upon. Were there other constraints on that process? Because I it just, I can't believe there was an extensive back and forth with screening as the objective and this is the final solution. May I add, uh, we have the part of the landscaping plan that we submitted to our arborist was also to, to improve uh, irrigation and in, uh, in improve or cultivate growth of the existing trees on site already so that they will grow and provide that, that necessary screening that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. So that was also incorporated into the, the, the landscaping plan. And some of the challenges here, you can't really see it well from the pictures, but the, the terrain along the driveway access and on the other side, that is all like solid uh, granite stone or something, mm -hmm. trying to do some landscaping. Plus, I'm not sure if you can see, but right at the entrance gate there, we have uh, an existing pg and &E power pole with the stay wires also. So that was also a, a, a concern in trying to plant trees too close to that location. Mm -hmm. But uh, we did look at all that uh, up, uh, approach as far as how can we best provide the necessary screening and we submitted and we went through the process. And uh, uh, from Melandi Drive, again, by, by putting in the additional trees on the front side along the gate, as well as uh, pro uh, providing uh, proper landscaping uh, and cultivating the existing trees to grow, the, the goal was obviously to, at, at full maturity, the existing trees with the, with the proposed landscape will provide that necessary screening. The, because uh, uh, it's not just the view from Melanie, I also find the view from Heather's school disappointing as well, if we've got that one. I guess that's the top one here. Um, and I know, uh, and I think it is, your landscaping plan is planting around both tanks. Um, so that is part of our review here, is what is the collective impact. And I, I guess I'm just struggling why, would our elementary school still be staring at a great big tank 12 years later when you've got plenty of room to make plannings on? I'm just, I, I am struggling with this. Are, are we looking at this picture? I'm just, just wanna. Yeah, the top photo that we're looking at here, that's the 12 year view. From the Heather Dog Park area. Yes, right? yeah. So that we are looking at the same view. Yeah, the, these three photos are the 12 year views that I, that I have. Yeah, we 
we're focusing on the new tank, the uh, landscaping. So do you have a slide of the Heather dog? Um, I think this is the slide. It's at the, the top. Okay. But I think what Christina is saying is the tank to the left is the existing tank. So the screening efforts were to screen the tank to the right. I, 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 well, I mean, I understand that. Uh, the landscaping plan is actually presenting a plan for the entire area. And I think it's perfectly within our purview to have an opinion of the screening of the existing tank as we consider approval and design review of, of the new tank. Um, so do any of the other commissioners share my concerns on this? I think I would like to hear directly what more can be done on this landscaping plan given the amount of space that is available here. I'm not really, and it sounds like there was a lot of back and forth, but those folks don't happen to be in the room. Um, so I think I would like to hear from them directly if there are hard constraints why we can't actually achieve a screening here that's effective. I concur. I agree. I would like to hear from the actual landscaping. And I, and I, I, I know you've probably done a lot of work on this and it's peer reviewed, but we'd like to hear it and ask the questions ourselves. So, and if there are anything else that can be done, we obviously we would want it to be done. So yeah, I definitely want to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it was a lengthy process to get here, so I think another week or so, uh, maybe more trees could just be added when this comes back before us, or. Um, at least uh, the folks who work this landscaping design uh, could at least explain it to us better. Uh, uh, which, which particular photo, the one from Landy Drive from the dog park below, is where you, you, you think more landscaping well, can? Well, I mean, I would just, you know, uh, the San Carlos general plan policy uh, 8.16 is require utility facilities to be sensitively placed, shielded, screened, or lessened from view to the greatest extent possible through design review. So that's what we're doing here this evening. And I don't think anyone, you know, given that you're only on 6% of your lot, I don't think anyone could look at these three views and come to a reasonable conclusion that they've been screened to the greatest extent possible. We should make a movement to, one of us should make we a movement can, to I, continue. I, I also had a quick question on, um, so this is gonna make use of the existing pump. So basically there's a pump there now, and this second tank will just tie into that infrastructure so there's no additional mechanicals being added? Okay, and um, is, that, does, is that pump sound suppressed? I mean, I, I don't think we've received any uh, comments or anything from the community, but, I'm just curious what a pump like that is like. The existing uh, booster pump, it's within uh, an acoustic shelter on the premises. Okay. And it's closer towards the slope here where it goes on this way. Okay. So that slope hinders and mitigates some of the noise that may be emitted. But again, uh, quick question. It's Jim, the how often do we operate the pump on a day? Not at all. Uh, right now we're just using gravity. We're just gravity. Okay. I think it's, I saw somewhere in a report it gets tested like 5 a.m. once a week. So presumably there's something in here that, that said that somewhere. Anyway. Uh, Best as I can tell for the, all the years that we've operated at the station, we've never had, and again, with the acoustic shelter yeah, over the pump yeah. to mitigate that, I think. Uh, Terrific. I just want to understand that better. I, I would imagine if that thing was noisy, we'd have some residents in the room yeah, talking yeah. about it. The closest neighbor from that side will, will be the neighbors on this side of Melendi Drive, and we've had no complaints with our neighbor from okay. our neighbors there. Okay. Terrific. Yeah, those, uh, those were my concerns. Uh, uh, Commissioner, uh, did, did we receive any requests for comments, public comment on this? If we're ready. Uh, so you can have a seat and thank you. Now we'll hear from the citizens. Is there anyone who wishes to speak? I don't have a sp speaker slip, but now is your chance. Anyone here 
in support or opposition or suggested changes like we've talked about? No comments? Last chance? Okay. The, the final thing I would just say on the landscaping is um, just the uh, – so obviously we're interested in more screening and understanding what that will look like over time. So if a 20- or 25-year view, uh, you know, anything – like as long as it's solved on a long-term basis, that's where I would get comfortable and that uh, species are being used that obviously will – cover up a 40-foot high uh, prominently placed water tank. So um, if there's any other material that could be presented that could get us comfortable in that way, uh, that'd be great. Uh, with that, I would move to uh, uh, continue this agenda item until a uh, future date. I'll second. Roll call, okay. Um, committee member, excuse me, Commissioner Dugan. Uh, yes. Vice Chair Bergman. Yes. And Chair Bradley. Yes, thank you. So I think that's the one area that they need to, to uh, concentrate on, and it shouldn't be too difficult. I know the topography is steep. The site is somewhat limited, but uh, I know it could be worked out by a fairly creative landscape architect and come back at an early convenience after you've done that we'll move ahead on the approval then. Any other questions or comments? Uh, move the hearing be closed. Second. Approved the continuance. Yes. So now we're at with correspondence and general information. Yeah. yeah. Reports, correspondence, and general information. <clears throat> yes, through the chair, um, staff does have um, a brief announcement um, on, on item A, reports on recent city council actions. As I mentioned, I believe um, at a prior planning commission meeting, um, the city council had a study session on housing and housing affordability um, on April 8th, and that discussion um, has been continued to April 22nd. So I just like to let the commission know that that um, conversation as a study session item um, is being continued um, to the council meeting of April 22nd. Thank you. Planning commission comments or reports. I have two, two items. Um, on April 30th, the end of this month, at 6 p.m., there will be a meeting on housing for planning commissioners specifically um, for cities and San, all over San Mateo County uh, at the San Mateo City Library. It's a continuation of the Planning Commission Academy that they held there uh, a month or so ago. And I'll be speaking at that. The other item is uh, your planning director and and our new planner, Kelly, um, and myself attended the APA, the American Planning Association National Conference. Um, it was on today and it ends tomorrow. We were there on sat Saturday and Sunday. Um, uh, 5,500 people registered from all over the country and a few foreign countries. Uh, a lot of items concerning city planning and the process. So it was quite successful. That's all I have. Do we have correspondence? None this evening, Chair. And planning staff comments, reports, updates on current projects. Uh, nothing to report other than just a reminder that the item that was um, agendized for this evening, 817 Walnut, will be continued um, to May 6th. 
And um, I already mentioned that the housing, uh, this council housing study session um, was continued to April 22nd. So there's no further um, announcements for this evening. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>